Before we get started, the channel broke 100,000 subscribers and the verified badge is on the way, so thank you everyone for that. It's mind-blowing and you guys are amazing. To celebrate that, we do have these shirts, these merchandise pieces right here. You can grab them in any color that you want. The design is to celebrate 100,000, also kind of loosely themed around Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, hopefully these ones are better than the previous ones and anyone interested, the link is down below in the description. All right, everyone, today's video is going to be a complete guide on how to get every single talisman in the game, also where to find all of the components for the recipe, etc. And these offer some really good bonuses, so if you have not picked up at least a couple of these already, I would highly recommend that you do so. They have various things ranging from weapon degradation speed to core drain rate and some other stuff. And they also look pretty cool. They have an aesthetic application to your outfit that you can select at your outfit center. So you can choose which one you're wearing, and it's a really nice little tidbit of the game. I'll start with the simplest one, and that is the Ravenclaw Talisman, and the only component that you actually need for this is an old brass compass. Now, there's a specific location to get this. This is not a droppable item or something you can find anywhere. There is one exact location, and that is all the way over here next to this lake there is a cabin in this little circle right here it took me a minute to find it right in here it's not marked on your map there will be a cabin and there there is a mission for a man a side quest to find all of the rock carvings in the game really quickly i will cover the rock carvings though i'm not going to go into depth on each one they can be a little bit tricky to find so i'll try and do it as quickly as possible but still give the information the first one is right here right next to this owen i'm not going to pronounce that right this lake right down here and it's a little bit hard to find but it's a little bit of the ways up on the slope you just look up and then you sketch it in your journal that's how you know you've completed that one after you've gotten the sketch the next one is very close by it's right here directly next to the edge of the t in west elizabeth it's up on the mountain and again make sure you've gotten the sketch that's how you know you've completed that one after that, we go north to Mount Hagen, or Hagen, or whatever it is. Right underneath the M on the trail on the way up, there is yet another rock carving. That makes a total of three. The next one is to the east and a little bit north of Window Rock, right at the edge of this little river outlet here, right at the top. This one right here will be the fourth rock carving. Sketch it in your journal, and hopefully it's an easy one to find. Some of these are pretty tricky, so if you can't find it right away, just explore that area a little bit in the exact location where I'm showing, and you will end up finding it. Also, if you can't seem to get the sketch, just walk around in the vicinity of the carving until you see the prompt to get a sketch. Sometimes it can be a little bit finicky. The next one is a little bit south, right next to the sea in Cumberland Forest. I'll zoom in right here. It is located directly here on the outcropping of rock. The next carving is right down here between the bend in the river and the Flatneck train station located on the hillside. The next one is also very close by. It is right next to Bacchus Station, again on the rock face. And this one is a little bit more tricky. Uh, I will include a link to an article in the description, which has a very precise guide on where to find all of these. But I figured I would include it just for the people that want to have it all in one resource on this video. But this is where the next one is, right next to Bacchus Station. Getting closer to the end now, the next one is north of the N in New Hanover and just above the train tracks that are there. This one is fairly easy to find compared to the rest of them, so hopefully it just falls into place and you get the sketch rather quickly. After that, it is over to the east above the R in New Hanover and directly above this little lake right here. There is a rock carving on the trail that leads up the hill. And the final location is north of the previous one, right next to the N in the Roanoke Ridge text which goes vertically right here as we zoom in is the exact location the last rock carving that you need and then you'll have all of the sketches once you have all of the sketches you have to go to a post office and mail them all to him then you simply have to wait about 24 in-game hours and you will get a letter back from him that invites you back to his cabin again the cabin is located directly here not marked on your map um, it's a little bit to the west of strawberry between that and the lake inside this circular-ish, it's not really a circle, but inside this loop of road right about here. There will be a cutscene, and the quest will finish up and wrap up, and once it's done, you'll end up outside the cabin. All you have to do is turn around, walk into the cabin, and grab the brass compass. It's lying right out in the open, and that's how you get it. Once you have it, you can go and you can buy the talisman, and that's the simplest one with only one component.
Next up is the Bison Horn Talisman, and this requires three different components. One of them is very simple to get, that's the Silver Earring, but the other two, not so much. So the Bison Horn is very quick. All you have to do is, I'll go to my map here, you have to hunt down one specific legendary animal, and that is the Bison up here in the Snowy Mountains. His direct location is there. All you need to do is track him down, hunt him. You'll get that piece of the, of the puzzle, that part of the talisman, just from harvesting his pelt. You can turn the pelt into the trapper or whatever, but make sure that you keep the other piece around for the talisman. Next is the abalone shell piece, and that one's really straightforward. You just have to walk in and grab it out of this little house right here directly north of Rhodes. All you do is walk inside. There's no guards. There's no special criteria. Walk in, grab the shell piece, and then that's what you'll need to construct the next talisman. Now, for the silver earring, there's a lot of different ways to get this. Um, it's really common to loot. I found that the best way was simply robbing trains. You also get a lot of money for that, and then they're throwing their various valuables at you, and oftentimes you'll get multiple silver earrings out of one train robbery not to mention the fact that you need other components of jewelry that you'll also get from trains so robbing a couple of trains anytime in the process of getting the talismans will be the fastest way to get those components Next up is the Boar Tusk Talisman, and again, this is a three-part one that requires two special ingredients as well as a gold earring. However, there's an easy way to get the gold earring, which I'll talk about in just a second. The first piece is the Boar Tusk itself from the Legendary Boar. That one is located a little bit north of Saint-Denis, right here on your map, again, a little bit north of the kind of bayou swamp area. Here, you can hunt down the boar, turn the pelt into the trapper, and get the tusk, which is the first component piece. The Cobalt Petrified Wood can be found a little bit north of Lake Isabella up here. It's not marked or anything, but there's a kind of cave-ish area. Inside that cave area, there is a chest in a snowy cart. All you have to do is climb up, open the chest. You'll get the Cobalt Petrified Wood as well as some dollars. That one's really simple. You can just go grab it whenever you want. You can get two gold earrings very quickly without having to loot them from people because those are a little bit more rare by going near to Wallace Station to this cabin right here, Watson's Cabin, in the woods. All you have to do is go in and loot one of the dressers. There will be an old woman there if you haven't visited it before. You can grab two gold earrings out of the dresser drawer and you can go down to the basement and there is a special gun in a weapon case there, so don't forget to grab that once you're picking up the earrings. Next up is the Bear Claw Talisman, and the Bear Claw is very straightforward. You get that early on in the campaign, so I don't need to say anything else about that. That's the first one you're going to be able to get. Then you have the Quartz Chunk. Now, the Quartz Chunk is a little bit harder, but it's pretty straightforward still. There's just a couple of steps. Number one, you're going to have to come to the Heartlands, and somewhere around here in this vicinity, there will be a lady that will give you this kind of side mission to gather dinosaur bones, and if you get one single dinosaur bone and mail it to her, again, you have to take that to a, uh, a mail postage office, send it to her, then wait a couple of days and she will send you the chunk of quartz. The easiest way to get a bone though is to go to the oil derrick right below the R in Heartlands, which is also very near to the first location where she tells you to get the bones, and you climb down the hole right beneath the oil derrick, and there will be a monster, uh, sorry, monster, a dinosaur bone at the bottom of that pit. You can sketch it, and then you mail that to her, and that's how you get the chunk of quartz. The last component for the Bear Claw Talisman is a silver chain bracelet. Those are abundantly common. All you have to do is rob a few people, and specifically a train, and you will almost definitely get one of those, so that's really straightforward. Last up is the Alligator Tooth Talisman, and this one is a little bit harder because there's a certain threshold in the campaign that you have to get to, but I'll tell you as much as I can about that. If you're not there yet, you'll probably know, and if you are there, again, you'll likely know. So in the bayou that is north of the main city, Saint-Denis, there will be a specific mission where it will become very clear to you that you are then able to hunt down the legendary alligator. After that mission, you can hunt him down. He's located here right above the U in Bayou. He's a very tough beast to kill. Uh, you have to take him down. You'll get his tooth. And then once you have that, uh, that's the first component of the talisman. Next up is the Vintage Civil War Handcuffs, and these are honestly really annoying to get, and it costs you a lot of money. You need to have one full set of the cigarette cards, and then again, just like the previous ones, you mail those cigarette cards to a specific person that gave you the quest to collect them at the post office. Once you've mailed those to him, you wait some time, and he'll mail you back the Vintage Civil War Handcuffs. Now, the cigarette cards are not super easy to get. The fastest way to do it will require a few hundred dollars at least. Most likely, it'll be upwards of 500 to $700. You just go to the general store. You repeatedly buy the premium cigarettes. Every time you buy a pack of those, you'll get one cigarette card of one of the sets at least. 
and then you simply go into your inventory and destroy or discard the cigarettes and that will allow you to keep purchasing over and over and over from the general store. The fastest way is to just stand in front of the shelf, not actually go through the catalog and then buy two packs, go into your inventory, discard, buy two packs over and over and over. If you're doing that, you'll get a set in probably about 20 to 30 minutes tops and it will cost you a few hundred dollars. Once you have the full set, mail them to him, get the Civil War handcuffs, boom, good to go. That's your last talisman. Talismans are pretty cool and they honestly have very strong bonuses. So I would highly recommend that anyone out there that has not done this, spend a couple of hours and go through and do it. You can select two at a time and some of them are pretty aesthetic. You know, they have a cool belt buckle or they're attached to your holster. And especially those who are completionists, you'll have to do this. Uh, but anyone out there that wants to buff up their character and make themselves stronger, go ahead. It can save you money by decreasing weapon degradation. It can increase your strength or decrease your core drain rate, let you stay out in the wild for longer. They're just really good things that I guess not a lot of people know how to get all of the components And I haven't seen a video out there that covers everything in one central resource So I thought I would make it again We have these shirts right here as a celebration of the 100,000 subscriber milestone that the channel just recently hit So if you want to grab one, there's tons of different colors The component of the design is only the white So if you want to put this on red or blue or green or purple or whatever It will look really good regardless. It doesn't require it to be on a certain color So check those out if you're interested again the link is down below in the description i'll wrap it up there thank you guys for watching there's various other links down below too you can join our facebook group you can follow my twitch channel even though i'm mostly streaming on youtube nowadays i'll go back to twitch for various other games there is a discord server we have our own website forums a bunch of ways to get involved with upper echelon if you'd like to do so you can reach out to me and follow me on twitter if you'd like if you have questions about the game or anything that you want to ask at all i'm open to that but I'll stop rambling. Thank you for watching. Hopefully the video has been helpful to some people for the talismans. And as always, have a nice night.